China is a vast country with far-flung borders. To the north, beyond the reach of steel rails, is a region sparsely inhabited but rich in oil and mineral deposits, an area very difficult to police. In every country, such a frontier has its adventurers, and China is no exception. With their followers, in uniforms made to look as much as possible like those of regular troops, men with illusions of military grandeur assume false military titles and ape the manners of high-ranking officers. The career of such a bandit is a short one, for the efficient Chinese government soon runs him to earth. This is the story of Wu Yen Fang, who marched from nowhere with a marauding band at his heels and was soon swept into oblivion. for a distinguished passenger, General Zhou Fu Shan. Well, I'm Gordon Creed. I have a reservation in coach three, compartment seven. I'm sorry, Mr. Creed. Compartment seven has been taken for General Zhou Fu Shan. The entire compartment. I made my reservation yesterday and I paid for it. I can't help it, sir. This is a government order. Well, can't you find me a seat somewhere? Not in first class. There might be something in second. <laughs> I'm not in the habit of traveling second. I insist that you find a seat for me. I will do my best, sir. Gordon. I've been looking for you. Hello, Harry. What are you doing here? Anything wrong? No, but it's a lucky thing they held the train or I'd have missed you. What's up? This letter came right after you left the office. It's a confidential report on the Jim Hallett oil property. The discovery field is worth millions, but Hallett is broke and he can't operate it. Hmm. Well, I'll check up on it when I get there. The situation is made to order for. Hallett needs cash. I stopped at the bank and got 50000 Good idea. I'll make him an offer for a quarter interest, just enough to keep operations going. Good luck to you. Good luck to both of us. <laughs> That's General Fu Shang. That's the fellow that grabbed my reservation. Pardon, Your Excellency. May we have your honorable permission to depart? We will leave immediately. Leave! I wonder why he's going north. I don't know. Must be trouble brewing. Ching Ha. Father, that's the starting signal. Are you sure that's the train for the north? Of course it is. Come on. Hurry, please. Hurry. Find a seat for me. Sorry, sir. Every seat is taken. All right, then. I'll sit in number seven. Impossible. This is compartment of General Joe Fushan. Well, what of it? You can't use all those seats. 
And besides, I paid for one of them. Sorry, sir. Nothing can be done. I'll look. Just a moment, please. Did this gentleman have a seat reserved in my compartment? Yes, Excellency. Then he shall have it. But, Excellency... The matter is settled. I don't like to intrude, General, but... Uh, Nonsense. Well, you're very kind. Come in. Thank you. Please, sit down. Thank you. I'm Gordon Creed of the International Oil Company. I'll be leaving the train in the morning at Ting Fu. I dare say we shall not disturb each other. I will have my dinner brought to me presently. And uh, after my dinner, I shall sleep very soundly. What time do we arrive at Ting Fu? At seven in the morning. Will the train be on time? You'll be satisfied if it's on the track. Can we arrange for overland transportation from that point? Yes, sir. Pack trains and guides may be engaged at Ting Fu. Are you going far? Town of San Hussan, from there to an oil field back in the hills. What time is dinner served in the restaurant car? The service will be late tonight. General Zhou Fushan is on the train, and he might dine first. Dine first? Well, I hope he doesn't go on a sit-down strike in there. I'm hungry. I see that uh, the rebel army of General Wu Yen Fang occupied Ku Chao yesterday. Fang calls himself the White Tiger of the North. Fang is a plague of locusts to the North. And like the locusts, he can only be fought with fire. Fang's days are numbered. Good evening. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Stuart, I know the gentleman who just entered. Ask him if he'd care to sit here. Who is he? Gordon Creed of International Oil. I want to find out where he's going, so be nice to him. That won't be difficult. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. How are you, Mr. Gold? Fine, thank you. This is my daughter, Lo. Mr. Gordon Creed, my dear. How do you do? How do you do? Thank you. Well, I had resigned myself to a dull evening on a very bad train. I see that fate has been very kind to me. <laughs> Traveling far, Mr. Cree? I'll be leaving the train in the morning at Ting Fu. Ting Fu? Oh, that's a coincidence. That's where we're going. Really? Yes. I suppose you'll be traveling by mule train. Of course. Good. And we can all travel together. Oh, how nice. How far north are you going, Mr. Creed? Saho San. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Well, that's where we're going. <laughs> you wouldn't by any chance be on your way to make a deal with Jim Hallett, would you? Jim Hallett? Yes. Hallett's Discovery Oil Field is near Saho San, you know. I'm going to see my wife. She's an apprentice missionary in the medical mission in Saho San. Oh, you have a wife. Yes. But we've been separated for years. That's the reason for my journey. You aren't by any chance going to see Jim Hallett, are you, Mr. Galt? I, uh... May I have your order, please? What? Oh, yes, of course, to be sure. <laughs> I'm traveling in distinguished company. I'm sharing a compartment with a very famous general. How thrilling! Will you introduce us? Of course. sound asleep. We'd better not disturb him. Not quite sound asleep, dear lady. But I expect to be very soon. I'm sorry we troubled you, General. Please do not speak of it. My friends here wanted to meet you. This is Miss Gold, her father, Mr. Myron Gold of Pekin. General Cho Fu Shan. How do you do? How do you do, General? Delighted. Won't you come in? I'm afraid you'd rather finish your nap. Please, come in. Thank you.
I always sleep much better when I have company. I hope you intend that as a compliment, General. A very great compliment. I only sleep in the presence of those I trust. But surely you're safe with so many soldiers to guard you. Soldiers are a calamity. I trust them only when my eyes are open. And I need rest badly. I have much work to do. Please, uh, make yourselves comfortable. I am very much at peace. Have a cigarette? Thanks. Mr. Gold? Thank you. Doesn't he sound a little flat to you? How long have you known Jim Hallett? Oh, not too long. Why don't you two stop fencing with each other? It's quite evident that you're both interested in the Discovery oil field. And I'm sure Mr. Creed will be delighted to know that my father owns it. How do you mean? I will own it when I take possession. You see, I loaned Jim the money to buy the property and develop it. Now his note's overdue. He'll have to give it up. Unless he can find the money to pay for it. He won't find it. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Mr. Gold. What's wrong now? Nothing serious, Mr. Walter. Probably a short circuit. Nothing to worry about. Those men were just as worried as I was. Anything could happen in China. It didn't seem to annoy General Fu Shan. He slept right through our little excitement. But look, he's not breathing. Something did happen, I know it. General Fu Shan. General. General Fouchan. The knife of the white tiger. The spies of General Wu Yan Fan. You admit that during the time you were in the compartment with General Chao Fu Shan, no one else entered there, and that he was killed with this knife. And yet, you insist you know nothing of how he was killed. But, General, surely you don't suspect us of killing him. That's ridiculous. General Ma is not accusing you. He is seeking information which will lead us to the killers. Information which you have so far refused to give. But we've told you everything that we know. You know nothing. That is not possible. The man who was killed before your eyes. But he wasn't killed before our eyes. He was killed in the dark. We told you the lights went out for a moment. We had nothing against the general. We didn't even know him. Why should we kill General Cho Fu Shan? That is exactly what I am trying to find out. He was on his way to fight Wu Yen Fang. Fang has fallen spies in his employ. But we're not spies. You've no right to keep us here any longer. You are now in the military province of Chiang Kai-Kan. As a military governor of this province, it is my right to execute you if I see fit. Execute us? Exactly. And unless you tell me what you know, I shall order you before a firing squad at once. <laughs> I need to take you to come up. Hello. Where? Sorry to cause you this trouble. We have found the murder. I'm certainly glad you found it. What are they going to do with him? They're going to bury him. I 
you doing, Dad? Not too well. This horse makes me seasick. <laughs> I wish I had a bottle of smelling salt. You're not going to faint. No, but I'm afraid that mule is. you people in it. How are you, Lola? You're looking fit. So are you, Jim. Mr. Galt, how are you? Well, I could be better. You know Creed of International Oil, I don't think you? I do. Met you at the Shensi Club in Peking. That's right. Glad to see you, Hallett. You people shouldn't have come here. Didn't you know there was fighting in this province? Well, we had no idea of it until we reached Ting Fu. They were held there for three days by a military investigation. General Fu Shan was assassinated on the train, and we were there when it happened. So Fang has knocked off another enemy. It's his army that's fighting in this province now. We better get to the medical mission as soon as we can. Come along. Well, if it's capital you need to operate your oil wells, we might make a deal. Capital's the one thing I need most. Well, I'm prepared to make you a cash offer. When can I look at the property? As soon as the war is over. War? Right now, my oil fields are completely overrun by Fang's bandits. Well, I don't think my company would be interested. <laughs> no? I didn't think so either. Excuse me. Are you getting tired? We'll be glad to get there. Well, Jim, why haven't I heard from you? I was going to Peking to see you. Broke again, Jim? Completely. Don't forget your first note's already overdue. I know it. Yep, that's Saho San. Doctor, I'm Gordon Cree. How do you do? This is Miss Galt. How do, How do you, you do? do? Mr. Galt, Dr. Abernathy. How do you How do, 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 Doctor? Friends, I welcome you all to the mission. But I'm afraid these poor walls won't be much protection against Fang and his soldiers. Fang is a bloodthirsty devil. I've been laughing at devils all my life. Come with me and I'll show you where you're to sleep. Your rooms may not be comfortable, but they'll be clean. At least there'll be no vermin in them. Not until the bandits get here. That's a jolly thought. The Captain Louis Ride Village. See, General Wu Yen Fang is come. All who oppose Will of Fang be fixed most and quick. Yes, Excellency. <laughs> Army China. Ching? Yes, Excellency. Oh, 
phony don't amount to much, Pear, but I hate to have Fang get them. Hide them out someplace. Yes. Jim! Jane! Why weren't you in the welcoming committee? Don't you know that your husband, the eminent Mr. Creed, is here? Yes, I saw him. He came to see me. About my oil property. Say, does he know you're in the mission? His attorneys do. They wrote me here. Well, I'm glad he came. Now you can tell him you're going to divorce him and marry me. No, I can't, Jim. We settled that once before. You thought we did. Oh, here comes our husband now. Well, how nice, Jane. This is a pleasant surprise. You knew I was here, Gordon. But I didn't know what a thrill it would be to see you again. Shouldn't I kiss you? Oh, I don't think that's necessary. Mm. Why didn't you tell me you knew my wife, Hallett? I didn't think that was necessary either. When did you meet her? Before our separation or after? After. Attractive, isn't she? So you're a missionary. A young gospeler. Harvesting souls in the vineyard. Well. Is Jim your first convert? Yep, I'm converted. But I'm still sinner enough to take a poke at guys that kid me about it. I wouldn't try that, Jim. What is it, Jim? It's Fang's advance guard. I'm afraid this is it, gentlemen. You better go in, Mrs. Creed, and reassure our patients. Yes, Doctor. Hold your job. What are you going to do about it? Let them in. There's nothing else we can do. We have a number of men here. Why don't we do something to defend the place? You can't fight China, Mr. Creed. Let's go in the house. Where do you hook? away from this window. I'm Mrs. Creed. Try not to act afraid. We mustn't lose face at all. He wants you to line up here. Please do as he tells you. What does he want? Your wristwatch. Give it to him. It costs two hundred dollars. Please give it. Me. Don't do that, I beg of you. I'm not afraid of him. It's not a question of fear, child. I know these people. The man's simply curious about you. He won't hurt you. I'm the long hair, I'm now. What did he say about me? He gave you a name, that's all. Small dragon. Well, tell him I've got a name for him, too, you. <laughs> <laughs> He says that General Fang has graciously ordered that we're not to be harmed for the time being. Oh, isn't that sweet of the General? Please, Jim. Why He wants you to go with the soldiers. Find it to you, yeah? you do? I am Fang. I speak most dang bad English. I think I make you understand. We understand, General. We are your prisoners. No, I your guest. But please not to leave the town. 
is not nice, make Fang mad. The missioner is who? I am Dr. Abernathy. I have heard of you. You bring to poor of China not only new God, but cure for pain. These people missioner too? Uh, Mrs. Creed is my uh, assistant. The others are my guests, Americans. Ah, from wonderful great country. Ah, Mr. Cheng is learned six people in America. His bodyguard, most excellent big shot, is learned take people for ride. A Chinese gangster. One of the best. Now Mr. Cheng fix people for me. Ah. Only two women. Too bad. This one, not so good. What's the matter with me? Hair like straw. Eye like fog. Have wide mouth of fish. Well. You're no geranium yourself. Please, Miss Gall, be careful. Not yet, Mr. Cheng. By and by, we fix, maybe. Not yet. I hunger. You shall be served, Excellency. No can eat your food. Have cooks my own. My boys fix this room for me. Now, please to leave. Get out. Get out. What that mean, Mr. Cheng? Gambe means bottoms up. I think to you always. Bottoms up. Tell the lady about me, Mr. Cheng. General Fang. Captain Nui said you wanted me. Captain Nui, you're right. Very nice. I like. Come, we take walk. Come. How old you are? Twenty-three. Oh, too bad. At most dang old. How much you... Uh, how you say that, Mr. Cheng? How much do you weigh? Yes. How much you weigh? I don't think that's any of your business, General. All right. I don't care. What name you got? Jane Creed. Jane? No can say. I give more better name, maybe, by and by. How you like go campaign with me? You wouldn't want me. I'm married. All right. Do not take your husband. We have beautiful, swell... How you say that, Mr. Chang? Beautiful, swell time. You come with me, I give you beautiful, swell time. If you gate happiness, you. Not so dang bad for me, too. Well, what do you say? You know, if I want, it's easy to take you. You wouldn't dare do that. Oh, yes. A most dang daring man in China. Why you not want to go with me? Is it I am too, too... How you say that, Mr. Chang? Tough guy. Too tough guy? You've killed thousands of people. Too many people in China. I kill only man, only bad man. When I kill bad man, I feel good. I have did good deed. And who decides whether a man is good or bad? I do. I am Fang. You go now, Wame. You go too, Mr. Chang, I think. 
Not wish be disturbed. Anyone come, you fix him. Yes, Excellency. Hello. Please to sit. East meet west. How you do? Very nice. You tell General Fang I'd like to speak to him at once. You sabi? It isn't necessary to speak pidgin English. I speak your language quite as fluently as you do. You tell General Fang I'd like to see him at once. Impossible. The general is entertaining Mrs. Creed. I'd advise you to move on. Please. Well, you heard what he said. Aren't you going to do anything about it? It's an unfortunate situation. Very unfortunate for Mrs. Creed. Nothing I can do. What about you? Of course I feel sorry for Jane. But I can't fight an entire army. It's too bad they got Hallett. He likes being a hero. What do you mean? You figure it out for yourself. Oh, so that's it. Lola. Where did they take Jim? He's under guard in the mule house. What are you going to do? Help him to get out of there. Lola, you'll get us all in trouble. Well, Jim's man enough to try to get us out of trouble. Lola. Master. Lola. Jim. Where's Jane? Fang has her in the living room. This polite one only admire, not touch. We'll ensure your politeness, General. Sit down. Thank you so much. Too bad I call Mr. Chang. Too bad for you, General. Not nice, mission lady killed man. Why you not turn other cheek? Maybe that's because I'm only an apprentice missionary. I assure you, I won't hesitate to shoot you. Don't move. But must. Afraid this man shoot you. Gun not work with safety cap. Mr. Chang. Forgive me, Excellency. This prisoner escaped. They captured him as he was trying to enter this room. Come. So you like kill me, my friend? Gladly, if necessary. To save lady? You guessed it. Shall I fix him, Excellency? Not yet, Mr. Chang. By and by we fix, maybe. Too bad we got killed him. Oh, no, General. You not want to see him die? No. Very nice. Me not want to see him die, too. You're not member so good, my friend. I don't know what you mean, General. Look. One time, poor Cooley chased by General Ma soldier. You hide him till soldier all gone. Yes, well? Where was bullet in that Cooley? Tell me that. He had three slugs in his left shoulder. Ah, you remember. Then what you do? I dug him out and passed him up as well as I could. But he sneaked away one night when I was asleep. He was an ungrateful son of a gun. Son of a gun. That was name you give him. Son of me gun. Is the idea? Is he a relation of yours? No, no relation. He is me. I am him. Now you know me? Well, I'll take your word for it. So we don't fix him, Excellency? Fix him? Fix my friend who saved my life when it is almost finished? You think the gate fang have no grateful in his heart? For well, that should fix you, Mr. Chang. This your woman I got here? Oh, no, but I'm interested. It's all right. I give her back you. What one woman between friends? Wame, Samshu, Samshu, my friend. 
Tell me, how did a coolie so soon become the great General Fang? It's easy. I leave you join our army. Most dang soon, I'm great Fang. But how did you manage it so quickly? One day, the captain is killed. I become captain. Next day, the major. I am major. By and by, the colonel. I become colonel. I kill the general myself. And now you're a warlord. Bah, he's great life. You come with me, my friend. I make you general quick. Huh? No thanks, not for me. Was fate for that. Come, we drink. Gambe, to me. To you. Of course, I am Fang. Now tell what you do here. Well, I've been operating the Discovery oil field, but I had to quit. All money gone? That's it. Mr. Galt, that's the elderly man from Peking, holds my note for 50,000. He come collect? Yeah, but I couldn't pay him. Too bad. Other man is who? Gordon Creed. Creed? He your husband? Yes, but we're separated. She's bad man? She'll never tell you, General. My friend here is good man. Why you not take him? I'm not divorced, General. But you separate. The lady doesn't believe in divorce. She has husband who is bad man. She want my friend who is good man, but no take him. Very strange. My friend, you got plenty trouble. Plenty. All right, in morning we fix. Gambe. Who's there? Why, yes, of course. I just wanted to thank you for what you did tonight. Jim told me. All I did was to warn him. Why did you come to San Jose? My father had business here. Is that the only reason? Perhaps I had other ideas. About Jim? I didn't know until tonight that Jim was in love with you. Well, I'm afraid that can't make any difference. There can never be anything between Jim and me. That still doesn't help me. But thanks just the same. Well. What do you suppose they want with us now? I don't know. They say the general order just brought here. Perhaps they're preparing for an execution. Couldn't be yours by any chance. Sorry to disappoint you, Creed. His Excellency, General Fang. How you do? Very nice day. Good morning. How are you this morning, General? How you do? You very beautiful. Even in daytime. But I give you to him, I keep word. Just a minute, General. Let me set you straight. You can't give her to anybody. She happens to be my wife. It's too bad, but not to get excited about it. Well, I promise you I will get excited about it. Mr. Chang? Excellency. You shall shoot first one to interrupt me. Very good, Excellency. Please to sit. Mm. You too, my friend. I begin with you, Dr. Michener. You are good for poor China. I not interrupt your work. Thank you very much, General. I had wish take Ekin woman, souvenir. You like go with me? No, thank you. I make you very happy. I'm afraid I couldn't stand so much happiness. I am Fang. I'm Lola. All right, I don't want you anyhow. Not like woman who is tough guy. You are who? I'm Myron Galt of Pekin. And you rich man? I wouldn't say that exactly. I have way make people say truth. Well, what I mean to say is I have enough money to live very comfortably. Nice, very nice. How you make money? I'm a financier. That is what, Mr. Jack? A financier is one who loans money, Excellency, and charges very high interest. In a great excellent country, he would be called a loan shark. Oh, me no sock. <laughs> Make good soup. You loan money, my friend Jim Oilfield. Yes. No campaign. Well, that's too bad. In that case, I'll take possession of the field and operate it myself. Why, you no lend him more money, so he operate field. You get money back. The field is mine now, and I intend to hold on to it. I think maybe not. Bang, number one man, this province. Oh, I'll do the right thing by Hallett. Very nice, very nice. When I take possession, I'll give him a nice fat bonus. What is that fat bonus, Mr. Chang? 
An extra dividend, Excellency. A profit beyond that which is agreed upon. How fat that bonus? Oh, say $500. Well, that's fair, isn't it? You like money too much, Mr. Gov. Very sorry, you. You come here by interest oil field, my friend? That's right. How much you pay? I offered him $50,000 for a quarter interest. You got that money here? Why, of course not. I never carry that amount with me. Please not to lie. People do business China oil field, always cash. Mr. Lonefish. You mean me, General? You got my friend note, $50,000? Right here. Mr. Keyes, you got $50,000. I won. I won't submit to being robbed. My government... I'm not robbed. You give, I take. Give. Absolutely not. Mr. Chang? I'm not touch to him. Why, thank you, General. I didn't expect this. The lone fish, you got $50,000. Give me my friend note. I can't do that. You just stole this money from Mr. Creed. Mr. Chang. Now, my friend, you are all fixed. I can't take the note, General. Why not? Well, it isn't a legal transaction. American people, they strange. Now he's legal. Give me money, please. The 50,000 you want it back? You get paid. Yes, but this is an outrage. I won't stand for it. Mr. Chang. To Dr. Mishina, for poor people China. But I can't accept this. Not even for poor China? No, General, I'm sorry. Well, if nobody wants it, I'll take it. Oh, no. I take. I am most thank poor people China. Now, please to leave, everyone, except Mr. Lonefish, Mr. Keith. Stay here with me. Fang is number one man here. Yes, we're beginning to see that, General. He's General Ma yesterday, today is me. That is China. Discovery oil field is rich. I think I understand, General. You will grant a concession to operate the oil field to the man that offers the most money. Is that right? I am a poor man. Well, I'll give 10,000. I am very poor man. I'll give you 50,000. 51. All right, 100,000. 150. 175. 190. 200,000. Is enough? Enough. Too much. I know take check and I'm no dang fool. You think I let you go get $200,000? 200,000 200, soldier, maybe. And what was the idea of the auction in the first place? I wish see you men weren't hold for ransom. Ransom? Ransom? How much ransom? Just what you have bid. $200,000, you, Mr. Lonefish. $190,000, you, Mr. Keith. But, General, we know them out, Mr. Chang. Yes, Excellency. I am good businessman, Mr. Chang. You are the grandfather of wisdom, Excellency. This is a fine mess. Wait a minute. I think I see a way out of this. Captain. Doesn't understand a word of English. He'll understand this language. What is she? What is that? He threatened Jim. And it's very fortunate for you that the general has befriended you. What's that? It's a funeral. The funeral of a merchant who refused to pay squeeze to find. And I'm afraid there'll be others before he leaves here. Jim, at least you can trust Fang. Not for a minute. But, Doctor, don't you think we can depend on Fang's gratitude to Jim? No telling what he'll do. That fat-faced captain is the man to worry about. Possibly. He has power among the men, all right. I'd feel better if I knew General Marr was on the march in this direction. But we could only get word to him. Mr. 
Where'd you hide the horses, Pam? Behind the wall outside the town. I want you to ride to General Ma. Tell him Thang is here. But the town gates are closing. Got it, master. Well, cemetery is outside the wall, isn't it? Yes. And there's your chance. Up to it. Information for General Ma about Fang, the bandit. Let him come in. You have information regarding Wing Fang? Fang has captured the village of Sa Ho Sen. Some foreigners are in danger there. We write to Sha Ho Sen at once. Quick, give order. Did you just think to walk? Condition. Do you know that Creed bribed Captain Yui to start a revolt against the general? Fang was going to hold us for ransom. Creed knows what he's doing. But you don't. If Yui gets the upper hand, he's sure to kill Jim. No, no, Missy. No one you. More better you stay. playing dumb. You'll only antagonize the general. Please. You send him for help? Yes. You're not trust me. As far as I'm concerned, yes. But what about the others, Galt and Creed? Mr. Creed, no good friend for you. Mr. <laughs> Most unfortunate situation. Make plenty trouble me, my friend. For blow you strike Captain Nui, he lose face. Insist you die. But General, you're not going to permit that. Speak most dang bad English. Think maybe Mr. Cheng explain what happened? The captain has incited the men to revolt. Unless permitted to settle his blood feud with Mr. Hallett, there'll be much trouble. But, General, you can't let them execute your friend. But you said yourself he saved your life. Why don't you do something? What can do? Captain Nui have all soldier. If you say no, we all get fixed. Most dang quick. General. It was Creed who bribed this man to start the revolt. So Mr. Creed start this double. Why not? 
You were going to hold me for ransom. I'm sorry, my friend. In one hour, you die. If I not let you die low, I come watch. Thanks. That'll be a big help. Henla. One moment, please, Mr. Keith. I like make compliments. Very pious. My friend. Thank you, General. No hard feelings, I hope. Hard feel it? Well, yes, sir. I hope you're not angry at me. See, you sort of had me on the spot. And, uh, well, I had to do a little double crossing. Double? What that be, Mr. Jake? To double cross a friend is to betray him, Excellency. Oh. How you get Captain Nui double cross me? Well, you can do almost anything with money. You know that, General. Yeah. Wisdom fall from your lip. You know maybe Captain Nui ask life, Mr. Hallett? I'm sorry for Hallett, but that's his lookout. And besides, he's in love with my wife. You love your woman? Well, regardless of that, he'll never get her. Now, General, let's get back to business. You know, you and I could make a much better deal than the one I made with Captain Newey. You mean we double cost him, too? Why not? You're in this racket to make money, aren't you? You very smart man, Mr. Key. My friend? I give you most best deal anybody. You go leave here now, and it not cost no money. What's the catch? It's no catch. It's easy. I just go kill you. <laughs> you must be joking, General. Do I look like Joker? Do Mr. Cheng look like Joker? General, what would you gain by doing this? Alive you no good. Dead you very good. Make two people happy. You mean you want to kill me so that my wife can marry Hallett? It's the best way, I think. Well, if that's what's worrying you, General, I can arrange it. I'll give her a divorce. He can have her. Have seen man not fight for his money. Have seen man not fight for his life. Not before have seen man not fight for his woman. But, General, if it's money you want, well, I give you plenty of money. Anything that you want. It's not I no want money. It's that I no want you. I do this myself, Mr. Cheng. Well, at least fight fair. You, you both have guns. Give me a chance. But if I give you gun, you maybe shoot me. You think I am dang fool? Mr. Cheng, not nice thing to do. Hmm? General, please. You're Mr. not going to let them do this to him. There must be something you can do to save him. It'd make me bear sad. If it's money you want, I'll make my father give you every dollar he has. Oh. So you love this gym, too? Oh. Huh. Two women love it. Must be very good man. All same me. Jing! You feel all right? What do you think? I think, my friend, you will not lose face. Cigarette? You want to make it a good show, huh? With all the trimming. It's very good, cigarette. Look. I killed two men, get this. It make fire. 
Sometime. Son of me gone. Ah, he's very nice. You want blink? No, thanks. Me, I want blink when I die. Bottoms up. You all ready now? I'm ready. Me, I am ready too. Chang. You feel all right? Uh, I have felt worse. You think I let you die? Huh. I don't know yet how you put it over. It's easy. I am fanged. All men to gate. General Ma at gate of town with soldier. Your servant cooked plenty of trouble for me. But it's all right. I am fine. Well, goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, General. you get lonesome, you'll be running to him whether I'm living or dead. Take it easy, Creed. Don't mind if he doesn't know what he's saying. Oh, yes, I do. I've never been saved in my life. Now, you listen to me. I stopped the bullet tonight on account of you. Well, now you're going to stop one. I'm going to call it an accident. How many times I got kill you, Mr. Keith? General. It's my mistake. You should let Mr. Chang fix him first time. <laughs> Too bad. Soldier are beaten and caught in trap. We won't let him take you alive, Excellency. We'll barricade the house. It's too late. Gun smash house, kill my friend. No. No. Tell General Ma, Fang is finished. 
Excellency. I'll let you die with me. What more do you want? I shall do as you say, Excellency. General Ma will execute you. Yes, my friend. You have a very great pleasure. One moment, please. He's too big high. You feel all right? No, General, I don't. It's my fault all this is happening to you. Not your fault. It's fortune war. I'd give my right arm if I could help you like you helped me. I think maybe you need right arm. It's more best you keep, huh? Sigai? Souvenir you, my friend. Nice farm shape. Not so good. Ah, very nice. For you too. You drink my help, huh? Happy journey, General. Bottoms up. necessary for all foreign women to leave as soon as possible. Very well, General. These ladies are leaving in the morning. It is better, sir. on Turner Classic Movies. We've got something right up your alley since we're celebrating Priscilla Lane's birthday, starting with her collegiate infatuation with Dick Powell and Varsity Show. Then military cadet Wayne Morris doesn't know what he's been told, but his hots for Lane are anything but cold in Brother Rat. And then Lane hypnotizes Rawhide Crooner and Gene Autry wannabe Dick Powell, a cowboy from Brooklyn. Now that's one big fish out of water on Turner Classic Movies today. Just leave your cares and woes and let your troubles fall. You'll find a starry sky behind that cloud you're under. It's such a perfect time for one real wonder. Now playing, it's the extreme close-up projector of the future. Plus, each copy of Now Playing brings you a behind-the-scenes cover story written by our own Robert Osborne, who shares his years inside Hollywood with you. Now Playing. Dig these movie-drenched pages and those in-depth descriptions and schedules. 
Just call 1-800-TCM-1002 and each month you'll be able to look up when your favorite movies will be on Turner Classic Movies. Now playing. Right now, it's over 50% off the cover price for a year's worth of movie schedules and so much more. It's now playing. So call 1-800-TCM-1002 or send check or money order to Now Playing. P.O. Box 420934, Palm Coast, Florida, 32142-0934. And for only $11.95 per year, get your ticket to movie heaven from Turner Classic Movies. Allow 6 to 12 weeks for delivery. It's a magical place where a young girl takes a fantastic journey through an enchanted land where wishes come true. This July 4th, TCM invites your family down the Yellow Brick Road to sing along with the film's popular songs in a special edition of our annual presentation. The Wizard of Oz, a sing-along completely commercial-free, today at 6 p.m. Eastern, and the original version presented Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Turner Classic Movies. Hi, I'm Robert Osborne, and we have a giant treat coming up for you and your family on this 4th of July. In just one hour, we're going to be showing in its entirety, and with no commercial interruptions, The Wizard of Oz. But with a twist. It's a special sing-along version, so that whenever there's a song, you and your family can join right in with Judy Garland and the Munchkins and everybody in the cast who sings. Now, to get you ready for the film, we first have a terrific documentary made in 1989 to commemorate the 50th anniversary of this very special film. It's called The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, and it's a documentary filled with great behind-the-scenes stories and interesting tidbits about the movie, which has been seen by more people worldwide than any other, thanks to its exposures on television. In this documentary, you'll be seeing interviews with Mervyn Leroy, who produced the film, also Ray Bolger, the Scarecrow, and Jack Haley, the Tin Man as well as interviews with Judy Garland's daughters, Liza Minnelli and Lorna Luft. You'll hear about the history of The Wizard of Oz from its origins as a classic children's novel written by L. Frank Baum. And you'll hear about some of the early dramatizations and on to the difficulties in the making of the 1939 film version. You'll also learn which other actors were considered for the various roles in the movie, including the part of the wizard and the part of the Wicked Witch of the West. And you'll learn why Over the Rainbow was almost cut from the film before it was released. Here, hosted by Angela Lansbury and directed by Jack Haley Jr., the son of the Tin Man, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Many, many miles east of nowhere lies the amazing land of Oz, a magnificent empire created in the mind of a man who wrote a great book about it. Like wildfire in a wheat field, the fabulous tale of the Wizard of Oz spread from town to city to nation to the entire world. The Wizard of Oz. More people have seen it than any other movie, over a billion of them. It's probably the most beloved movie ever made in any language. Vamos, vengan a pelear. ¿Quién será el primero? Pelearé con los dos, si quieren. Oiga, oiga, váyase y déjenos en paz. Asustado, ¿eh? ¿Tienes miedo? No estarás a gusto metido en esa lata. <risa> oh, des lions, des tigres y des panthères. Oh, mon Dieu, des lions, des tigres y des panthères. Ich warte meine Zeit ab. Und das merkt ihr, mein feines Kind. Es ist wahr, ich kann leider hier nicht auf dich lauern. Aber hüte dich, kreuze nie meinen Weg. 
wenn du es wagst, dann gehörst du mir, mein kleines Schätzchen, und dein Hund auch. A film historian has noted that the enduring magic of the Wizard of Oz touches not only our children, but the child in all of us. The enchantment is easy to explain. The movie's sentiments are universal. Its timelessness, that of any great classic. Those who created this work came as near to perfection as anyone could ask. I first saw The Wizard of Oz as a schoolgirl in London, and I thought it was unlike anything that I'd ever seen before. It was so innovative and such great fun. Later, when I began to watch it on television with my children, and then my grandchildren, with each viewing, I realized that indeed this is a very special motion picture. A movie filled with values that we all cherish. A movie for all of us, for all time. This is part of a missing number from The Wizard of Oz. Why it is missing will be explained as we share the reminiscences of many who were part of the fascinating history of Oz. Backstage, there was confusion, chaos, and often danger. Now, for the first time, you're going to learn this remarkable story told by those who participated in the making of a movie classic. They didn't want to do that, believe me, to spend that much money. Because there was a lot of money in those days, two million six, a lot of money. And they, they almost fired me for spending so much money. We, we, we finally took some of the makeup off. They took some of the makeup off and we went to the commissary. And it was such a frightening thing to see for other people because what we looked like were people from another world with those weird, weird kind of faces that we had. And they just kicked us out of the commissary and made us eat in the dressing room. People question me like you're questioning me now. and Say, it must have been fun making that picture. It was not fun like hell it was fun. It was a lot of hard work. It was not fun at all. There was nothing funny about it. I had to work with three very professional men, you know, Jack Haley and Bert Lauer and Ray Bolger. And they had so much makeup on. And they were so busy complaining about their makeups. And each one was making bets as to which makeup was the most difficult all the way through the picture. I thought that she was the most adorable creature that, that was ever put on this earth. And so right for the part of Dorothy. She was just like a little girl from Kansas. With great big eyes. She wasn't pretty. She's plump. But in a way, she was beautiful. I'm frightened, Daddy. I'm frightened. I think she holds the whole picture together. Her sincerity that she wants to get back to Kansas. You believe her. She wants to get home to her Aunt M and so forth. And that was the whole hub of the picture. But it's a wonderful picture. And we're part of it. The one thing that we will be known for no matter what we've done, any place else in the whole world will be the Wizard of Oz. Well, we don't get any residuals, but we have a better thing than residuals. We have a kind of immortality. And, and, and a great pride for being a part of a great American classic. You're out to see the wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. You find he is a wizard of wiz, if ever a wizard was. If ever a wizard was. The Wizard of Oz is one because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. You're out to see the wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. In the summer of 1989, there is an extraordinary outpouring of affection as all across America, fans celebrate the 50th birthday of The Wizard of Oz. From California to Kansas, from New York to Florida, a timeless movie continues to enchant generation after generation. On a drizzly Sunday morning in August, Midtown Manhattan comes to a halt as the most spectacular Oz event of the year takes place. This happening will find its way into the Guinness Book of World Records, with nearly 5,000 excited participants tap dancing down 34th Street. 
After weeks of rehearsal, the youngsters give it their all, knowing they'll be seen on TV, even if it's just for a fleeting moment. about the several pairs of ruby slippers worn by Judy Garland and how much they've been auctioned for. Anywhere from $15,000 to $165,000. Well, you can forget about those. These ruby slippers, created by the house of Harry Winston for the Oz anniversary, are valued at $3 million because they are made of real rubies. How the Wizard of Oz became a national heritage is a really fascinating story. It all began in 1900, when L. Frank Baum published his classic children's book, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Nearly 40 years later, the man indirectly responsible for bringing Oz to the screen was none other than Walt Disney. His Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is not only 1938's biggest hit, it is the most successful movie ever made to that date. This fact does not go unnoticed by other movie moguls, especially Louis B. Mayer, the highest paid executive in America. He reigns supreme at Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, a studio that boasts it has more stars than there are in the heavens. When it's suggested that MGM acquire the rights to The Wizard of Oz, Mayer is interested, but he has a problem. His brilliant head of production, Irving Thalberg, has passed away over a year ago. Mayer has been desperately searching for a successor and finally finds him. Mervyn Leroy, a bright 38-year-old producer-director, seems the perfect choice. Leroy accepts, and coincidentally, one of the first projects he proposes is Oz. Well, I always wanted to make The Wizard of Oz since I was a little boy. Mr. Mayer called me in and said, look, why don't you just produce this picture? You're so crazy about it. And I said, but, uh, but LB, I want to direct this picture, too. He said, well, I think it's too big for you to do both. But I produced it, and I'm very proud of it. To produce a motion picture this complex, Leroy definitely needs help. He takes on songwriter Arthur Freed as an uncredited associate. Years later, as a producer, Freed's name would become synonymous with the golden years of the MGM musicals. But at this moment, his biggest job is to help Leroy cast the picture. I'm the gold She has been the biggest star in the world for the past four years, and many think Shirley Temple is the natural choice to play the role of Dorothy. Leroy is under pressure to cast her. However, after hearing Shirley sing at an unofficial audition, Leroy and Free decide the demands of the part are beyond the talents of even this amazing 10-year-old. Still, on the off chance that things might change, Shirley seems prepared. I had a very good time in Bermuda with the horse and buggy, but I'm glad to be home. Because after all, there's no place like home. From the age of two and a half, when young Judy Garland began her vaudeville career as part of the Gum Sisters' Kitty Act, she had been billed as the little girl with the great big voice. By the time she is 15 years old, her name has been changed from Frances Gum to Judy Garland. And she has been under contract to MGM for almost three years. She can sing and dance, she can play drama, or comedy. Anyone in Hollywood who has seen her perform at benefits or private parties knows Judy Garland is destined for stardom. Leroy and Freed convince Mayer that Oz could be her breakthrough. Judy must lose some weight, but the part of Dorothy is hers. When Mama spoke about making The Wizard of Oz, I could always tell what respect she had for the movie and how proud she was to have been a part of it. Whenever she watched the movie, you could see in her eyes that she loved making that film because she was a kid, she was 16 years old. She had a great time making that movie and it was a happy time. At 22, she was the toast of Broadway. At 29, 
Billy Burke married Florence Ziegfeld, living a life of luxury worthy of a fairy tale princess. Then in her 50s, Billy Burke begins a successful Hollywood career playing rich featherbrain matrons. Oz is Burke's favorite movie. As close as I have come, she says, to the kind of roles I did in the theater. I'm Glinda, the Witch of the North. You are? Oh, I beg your pardon, but I've never heard of a beautiful witch before. Only bad witches are ugly. The casting for the Wicked Witch causes a major controversy and has everyone at MGM going in circles. Frank Baum's concept in the original book, as illustrated by W.W. W. Denslow, isn't much help. But Mervyn Leroy has an idea. Since Disney's glamorous Wicked Queen in Snow White is so successful, why not make the Wicked Witch slinky and seductive? Freed and other executives protest. Leroy's mind is made up. On the MGM lot is Gail Sundergaard, who the year before had won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress in Anthony Adverse, a film directed by Mervyn Leroy. Leroy persuades Sundergaard to test for the role. Decked out in stylish black sequins with a form-fitting wardrobe to match, she is a knockout. Freed and the others are exasperated. Bad witches are ugly, they remind Leroy, like Disney's old crone in Snow White. So Leroy orders the makeup department to give Sundergaard the ugly treatment. But her striking features defy the grease paint, and the distinguished actress decides she doesn't want the role. In those days, I was not about to make myself ugly, she says. I have no regrets. Absolutely no regrets. Then you take it and bring it up to your kisser and inhale. A former kindergarten teacher, Margaret Hamilton, is 36 years old and newly divorced. She has been supporting herself and her three-year-old son as a hard-working character actress. Chicken thieves, eh? Why, we'll gladly pay you for any damage that we've done. All right, three dollars. So I'd done about six pictures for MGM by that time. And uh, one day my agent called and said, uh, Maggie, he said, they're really kind of interested in you. And I said, what for? He said, uh, they're sort of interested in you uh, for a part in The Wizard of Oz. And I said, oh, gosh, think of that. I said, I loved that story from the time I was four years old. What is it? And he said, well, the witch. And I said, <laughs> the witch? <laughs> Then he said the final thing. He said, yes, what else? <laughs> the title role of the wizard encourages many diverse contenders. Ed Wynn, a popular radio comedian who concludes the part is too small. Wallace Beery, one of MGM's most popular stars, wants the role badly, but the studio refuses to spare him during the long Oz schedule. And W.C. Fields. Everyone at MGM is impressed by his recent triumph in David Copperfield, but Fields haggles endlessly over his salary and time runs out. One of MGM's most durable character actors